Greetings, folks. Uh, what I want to look at today is a technology that has caught on like wildfire. It's been featured in the Atlantic Monthly, April 2018. Paul Romer, winner of the Nobel Prize, extolled its virtues. It's free, it's open source, and if you're spending money to go to school in almost any STEM discipline, then this should be somewhere in your um, like if we think in terms of a cafeteria, make sure you give yourself a generous helping of Jupyter Notebooks through whatever course offers that. And I would say the same for high schoolers. If you're serious about, you know, staying up to date with your skills, this is one of those hot skills you're going to want. Now, what is a Jupyter Notebook? We're looking at one open right now, and I'm going to walk you through it glancingly looking at the content. I'm more interested in the Jupyter Notebook as a technology here, but for content, grist for the mill, you could say, I am using what we call our Sesame Street, which is a volumes table, a hierarchy of polyhedra in the sense that they're arranged concentrically, getting bigger and bigger, sorted in, sort, sorted in volume order. And uh, that's material I assume you're going to learn or you already know. So in this case, I'm importing Pandas. It's a Python package. It's third party. It's not part of the standard library. So you use pip, or if you're wanting to get everything in one big bundle, this Anaconda distribution is highly recommended by lots of folks like Jake Vanderplas, the uh, astronomer open source guy at University of Washington, and many others will tell you just get the Anaconda distribution. I teach Python professionally, and that's what I tell my students. It's a bring your own device curriculum. I don't force anybody to do anything, but I recommend strongly, and that's what I'm doing here. So NumPy is like where you get your rectangles of numbers, like arrays, rows and columns, any number of dimensions, but let's just say rows and columns to keep it simple. And then pandas will put a frame or or think of in terms of a canvas with a frame around it, like a picture. You use pandas to label your rows and columns with words so that you're not just needing to index into specific cells or any other content by means of numbers. Because when you add a column or row, what happens? Everything shifts, and that's a problem. Whereas if you've used words to label your rows and columns, those words will stay fixed. As you insert a row, um, that row will need a name, but you've got all these other names still there, and things can get shoved up and down, and so forth. So I'm just building a shapes table by creating a Python list. You'll see the square brackets and various string elements, feeding that as the index named argument here to the pd.dataframe constructor. It's going to initialize here uh, with one column of data. So we're really just creating a single uh, series, it's called, a panda series, but with named rows. So then when I look at the table, you'll see what that looks like. And the rest of this Jupyter Notebook is pretty much inserting more polyhedron than just these. Now, if these volume numbers don't look familiar at all, it's because you don't know American literature, and I understand that's not taught much any anywhere. But let's move on. The column zero is not friendly yet. It's not given a name. So we just have a zero there. We'd like to replace that with volume. So you get the flavor here. I'm saying the table, which is an object. It's got its dot notation, access to methods, attributes, whatever. So the dot columns lets me get into the columns, and I want to just replace the zero with the word volume. So shift enter on a code cell is what makes it execute. You'll see I have a combination here of what are called markdown cells. Let me bypass a lot of the HTML I'd need to learn to get nice formatting like this. I could just create links, for example, so easily. A pair of brackets with the word I want to use, as a hyperlink and then a pair of parens with the link inside the URL is all I need then to have a hyperlink. Didn't have to do as much as I would with tags and so forth. 
So you'll create these Jupyter Notebooks yourself using Markdown and code cells together. Continuing, you'll see you can embed LaTeX, which is a uh, language for formatting, typesetting, mathematical expressions, equations, and so forth. And there's a definition of the golden mean. And there below it is the code cell, which I just ran now, shift enter, or you can hit the run button to run the Python code that you see there. Other languages such as Julia, R, also run inside the Jupyter Notebook technology. So don't feel like Python's your only option here. It's a good option, and it's where the Jupyter technology came from originally, but not your only option. I just added an icosahedron. It's not sorted yet by volume, and clearly that's an irrational number. You can see an expression for it here, 5 times second root of 2 times phi to the second power, phi being the golden mean. So what if we want to sort that by volume? We do eventually, but before that, let's insert a rhombic tricontahedron into the table by appending and then we'll sort by volume and look at the table by volume. We've created a new table from the previous called by volume. So we're just going to continue to add a couple more features. Look how easy now to add a whole new column. We just say by volume, which is the name of a table, and square brackets the new column name that doesn't exist yet. It's almost like a Python dictionary, isn't it? equals, and then we use a column that does exist, the volumes column, and multiply it by 24. And that's just one line of code to create an entire new column wherein every volume entry is multiplied by 24. And why we do that is because the so-called A module is 1 24th of a tetrahedron. And since we're measuring all these volumes in terms of the unit tetrahedron, it makes sense to just multiply everything by 24. It doesn't mean you could assemble these shapes with rigid A modules necessarily. True, you could for the tetrahedron, but that's about it. But if you're thinking in terms of just volume as like pouring liquid style volume, where shape doesn't matter, then these would be accurate expressions of the volume. Just multiply the first column by 24. Now I want to insert a pentagonal dodecahedron. That's the dual of the icosahedron, another platonic. Its volume can be expressed in phi. I want its size so that it crisscrosses that icosahedron. The duals intersect to create a rhombic tricontahedron that we call the super IT. Now here in one line of code, I'm able to uh, insert these new values, both the 24 times value and the regular value into my table, and here's the super RT. Now, strangely, the uh, volume of the cube octahedron times this constant, which I've discussed in other videos. Check Martian math and Martian math part two. Uh, 20 times the synergetics constant, or S3, I'll add that comment, S3, uh, is going to give you the volume of the super RT which is roughly 21.21. Now these are all in tetra volumes. Add that to the table. I'm going to embed this uh, video in this very Jupyter notebook, which is available to you online at my GitHub accounts. So feel free to download it and run it yourself, make some changes, practice. Um, going in now using the .loc method shows that we can now gain access to our table simply using words, not row column numbers anymore, because we have added all these volumes. So this time, what I want to do is take the super RT, which is formed by crisscrossing the icosahedron and its dual, and shrink that down by phi. And what that does is gives me another rhombic tricontahedron that precisely shrink wraps, we could say, is tangent on all 30 diamond faces to the unit radius sphere in our CCP sphere packing. However, it's not going to have volume 5. It's going to have a volume a little bit bigger than 5 when you do that. And there's a lot of synergetic geometry, i.e., the math at the core of this uh, American literature that I keep talking about is what you're seeing here, and I haven't taken the time to explain it in great detail here, but other, other YouTubes 
of mine do. So feel free to check, say, Synergetics 101, the playlist there. Rhombic dodecahedron, that was there from the beginning, is a space filler and has a nice volume of six in this particular system. Remember, we're doing everything in terms of tetrahedron as unit volume. Finally, I decide I want a comments column so that I can talk a little bit more about each one of these polyhedrons. Notice I can do that fairly simply, simply by creating a comments series and then adding to it with all these labels. And then let's see, the shape of the comments is 10. And there it is, just all by itself. How can I add it to the by volume table? That simply. Simply create a new column called comments and feed it in because we have the same sequence. When I created this thing, I said index equals shapes, matching the shapes that we've gotten from the table. We must have updated shapes here somehow with the uh, most recent information. Where did we get the shapes in the uh, higher ups? Let's see, look for an update. Shapes append, okay, shapes is being updated as we go. Shapes is just a Python list. And as we've been adding polyhedra, I've been careful to update the shapes list as I go. So then when I um, create this final version of the by volume table, it does have my comments furnished as the rightmost column. So again, this went quickly. It's more about, hey, isn't Jupyter Notebooks cool? You can, and isn't Pandas cool? You can do all the stuff you can do with, say, a spreadsheet programmatically, which is much more auditable, which is kind of why people are pushing this technology a lot, because you can recreate step by step what someone else has done. Whereas with so many spreadsheets, someone's created it, but they did it by dive bombing in with a mouse and making unauditable changes that you can't trace. And that's why they're not good for bookkeeping either. If you keep your books on spreadsheets, you're uh, kind of Mickey Mouse is how, how we say it. Anyway, I uh, hope this was interesting, and I hope this is actually technology you've already started to master if you're paying money for a STEM education. We'll talk more in the future. Good luck.